This lesson is going to be discussing mole conversions. We had talked about what the mole is, and just as a reminder, remember the mole is a quantity. Just like the word a dozen uh, represents 12 items, a mole represents 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. That is a quantity of how many atoms or ionic compounds or molecules we have. Now, it would take us generations, it would take us hundreds of years uh, to count even to a mole, and on top of that, atoms are so small that obviously we would not be able to touch an atom and literally count one atom from the next. And so we go around, we get around that by actually recognizing that one mole, so 602 sextillion atoms, actually represents a specific mass of a specific element. And we use the periodic table to help us out with that. So for example, looking at your periodic table, if you look at one mole of carbon, one mole of carbon, that means 600.02, or I should say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, if we put those on a scale, they're going to have a mass of 12.01 grams. And since chemistry is in the language of moles, we need to recognize that the moles need to be converted into grams when we actually do work in the lab, because we won't be able to actually work with the units of moles in the lab we can measure grams, no problem, and then we just need to translate it into moles. So the analogy that I often do is sort of um, having two different languages where the book is written in one language, but you actually need to translate it using your own language to understand what that means, okay? So we're going to be talking about how do we do that conversion. So I want to just take a quick sidestep and discuss some regular math concepts, all right? And in terms of the number one, all right? So I think that everyone agrees that mathematically anything times one is one and the same. So if I have 12 times one, the answer is 12. Okay, we can even go so far as saying if I have apples times one, we still have apples. Now, mathematicians found a lot of power in this because they knew that anything times one would still be the same. And mathematically, we can do that because we're not changing anything. All right. So let's take a look at that one more time. Um, so let's take a look at one hour equals. 60 minutes. Okay, both P both of those units we would say are one and the same. One hour is the same thing as 60 minutes. And when we actually put those into a fraction where we put one over hour over 60 minutes, because they're one and the same, they actually equal the value of one. Now that does not mean that one over 60 equals one. But by using these units of one hour over 60 minutes, they are one and the same. That's the same thing as saying 60 minutes over one hour equals one. Okay, they are one and the same. So this was a powerful mathematical revelation because remember, we can multiply everything by one and we're not changing anything. We're just looking at it from a different perspective. And what we call these right here, these fractions that are equal to each other, we call those conversion factors. And we use conversion factors a lot in chemistry because remember, we need to translate the grams, which we can discover in the lab, and we need to translate those into moles because that's the language that chemistry is written in. And we can take moles, which is what chemistry is written in, and convert it into grams so we can actually work 
in the lab to figure out exactly the quantities we need. All right, so I'm going to show you um, a method of how we do the conversion. So just to give you an overview of what that looks like is a little bit of mathematical background. Remember, when you have a unit in the numerator, it can be canceled out if you have the same unit in the denominator. So here's an example of more or less the setup you're going to be doing. And some students find it a little bit more clearer if we put these over one. You do not need to do that. But here, if I have a number of moles over one, because anything over one is still the same thing, I can use this conversion factor of molar mass in grams over one mole to convert it into grams, okay? So this is the conversion factor that I would use to get from, gram, from moles to grams. You'll notice that I have moles in the numerator, and those can be canceled out because I have moles in the denominator, and I'm left with grams. So that gives me the answer in grams. That's exactly the same thing if I go from grams into moles. But you'll notice that my conversion factor for this one is going to be flipped. Because I have my quantity starting in grams, I need to make certain that I have grams as the denominator here so that my grams here in the numerator will be canceled out by grams in the denominator and I'm left with moles in the numerator. So these are the conversion factors we're going to be using. And I'll go ahead and work through several examples and then have you try one on your own. So here we have a question where I have, um, I want to know how many moles are in six grams of carbon. So step number one is I always need to find the molar mass so that I can start making these conversion factors. And so I look at my periodic table and I look at number six on the periodic table and I recognize that one mole, and when I'm writing mole mathematically, I drop the E and just write M-O-L, okay? So that's only if I'm writing it as a, mathemat as a mathematical unit. So one mole of carbon equals 12.01 grams of carbon. I found that on the periodic table. So now I need to create two conversion factors, okay? So those conversion factors, just as a reminder, are these fractions that we can use, and they are always over one mole. All right, so I'm going to take this information that I have right over here and create the conversion factor. So I can put one mole on top of carbon, and then below I can write 12.01 grams of carbon. The other conversion factor I can create is I can create one where grams is on top, so 12.01 grams over one mole of carbon. And I'll be able to use these when I actually do my conversions, okay? So the second thing that we're going to be doing is getting what I call the smell check, getting a sense of what should the answer be. Well, if I know that one mole of carbon equals 12 grams, if I have six grams, is that going to be less than one mole or greater than mole, one mole? Well, I know that 12 grams is one mole. So is the number six greater than 12 or less than 12? And the answer is it's less than 12. So my prediction is, is that I'm going to get a number that is less than one. All right, so let's see if that works out. So step number one, when I'm doing my calculation, is to actually use the quantity I'm given. So I'm given six grams of carbon. And now I put a multiplication sign, not an equal sign, a multiplication sign. And then I choose one of these conversion factors, okay? 
Now the conversion factor I need to choose is the one where whatever unit I have here is on the bottom of the conversion factor. So I have grams here. That means I'm looking for a conversion factor where grams is on the bottom. And you're right, it is this one right over here. What that does is it allows me to cancel out my grams. So I put 12.01 grams of carbon over one mole of carbon. Do these cancel out? Remember, grams is in the numerator here. And I'm going to even go ahead and cancel out my element too. So these grams in the numerator are canceled out by the grams in the denominator. And so when I work through my problem, I'm going to get an answer of about 0.5 moles of carbon. It'll be 0 0.44, uh, 0.499. Don't worry about how you round things now. We'll worry about that later on. So that means that I have a half a mole of carbon when I measure six grams of carbon. All right, let's try one more. Let's make this one maybe a little bit more challenging. So here I have a lithium oxide where I have two lithiums and one oxygen. So in this situation, we have an ionic compound where we have two lithiums and one oxygen. Just a reminder, the reason why we have two lithiums, remember each lithium wants to lose one electron and oxygen wants to gain two. So it requires two lithiums in order for um, these to have gotten a full valence shell. So the first step I do is I need to find the molar mass, all right? And so remember, that's, uh, that's discovering how much one mole of Li2O actually weighs. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is recognize that I have two moles of lithium. So one mole of lithium is going to weigh 6.94 grams. And because I have two of them, I multiply that by two. All right. The next piece in this here is recognizing I have one mole of oxygen. And one mole of oxygen has a mass of 16 grams. So when I add all of these up together, that works out to be 29.88 grams is how much one mole of Li2O actually weighs. So we're going to have to create some conversion factors for those. Remember, conversion factors are always over one mole. So I have one mole of lithium oxide, which we know has a mass of 29.88 grams of Li2O. Or the other conversion factor that I can have is where I have 29.88 grams of Li2O over one mole of Li2O. This allows us to work through whichever problem we need, whichever type of conversion we need to by choosing one of those. So now let's take a look over here. We know that one mole of lithium oxide weighs about 30 grams. When I look at the quantity I have, I have 60 grams. Am I going to expect that to be greater than one mole or less than one mole? Well, if one mole is about 30, 60 is a lot more than 30, so it's going to be greater than one mole. And in fact, for those of you math savvy people, you'll even recognize it's probably closer to two moles because 30 times two is about 60 and 63 is pretty close to two moles. So let's go ahead and work through one of these problems. Again, we go ahead and write down what we're given. We're given that we have 63 grams of lithium oxide. So we write that down. We put a multiplication sign, not an equal sign. It is a time sign. 
and then we create a fraction. Now, keep in mind we have grams as the numerator. Remember, that tells us we need to have grams as the denominator. So I'm going to already put the grams on the bottom because I know that whatever unit I have here has to be the same unit here. I look back at my conversion factors and I recognize that this conversion factor is the one that has grams on, as a denominator. So I take 29.88 grams of Li2O over one mole of Li2O. These cancel out. And my answer is that I have 2.11 moles of lithium oxide. And that's exactly what I predicted. All right, let's try a couple more. And this time around, we're going to look at the conversion the other way around. We had always worked from grams to moles. You'll notice now that we're, now we have moles instead of grams. So just a reminder, rather than uh, rewriting exactly what we had just written, remember from the last problem, we determined that one mole of lithium oxide has a mass of 29.88 grams. And we also created our conversion factors where we said one mole of lithium oxide uh, can be written on top, while 29.88 grams of lithium oxide can be written on the bottom. We can also set up a conversion factor the opposite way. So we're now going to determine which one of these we're going to have. Now we know that one mole of lithium oxide is going to be about 30 grams. If I have not one mole, but 1.5 moles, is that going to be more than 30 grams or less than 30 grams? And so we know that 1.5 moles is going to be greater than the molar mass of 30 grams. Okay, so we're expecting a number bigger than 30. So let's see what that works out to be. So I have 1.5 moles of lithium oxide. Remember, I write down what I'm given. Then I put a time sign, not an equal sign. And remember, whatever unit I have here, I need to have as a denominator. So I'm going to already write down mole. Now, which one of these conversion factors has moles on the bottom? That's this one right here, OK? And as a result, I'm going to copy that down. So one mole of Li2O is on the bottom and 29.88 grams of Li2O are on the top. These cancel out. And when I work through my calculation, it means that I have 44.82 grams of Li2O. And that's pretty much what I expected. I expected a number larger than 30. All right, the last example I'm going to do is one where we have now 0.67 moles of LiO2. Again, we're going to write down our molar mass. We know that one mole of lithium-2 oxide is 29.88 grams. We know our conversion factors are where we place these things that are equal to each other, these quantities that are equal to each other in fractions. So I can make the first one be one mole of Li2O over 29.88 grams of Li2O. I have the other option of having 29.88 grams of Li2O over one mole of Li2O. So looking at this here, I notice I don't have a whole gram. 0 0.67 moles is going to be less than one mole. And so I'm going to expect a number that is smaller than 29.88 grams. So let's see how much smaller it ends up being. Again, I write down my given. 0 0.67 moles of Li2O. 
I place a time sign, not an equal sign, and I'm going to write down whatever unit I have here at the bottom. That's moles. I look up here on my conversion factors and I identify which one of those has moles on the bottom. Oops. Let's try to get that back on there. There we go. Um, and it is this one right here. So one mole of Li2O has a mass of 29.88 grams of Li2O. These cancel out. And I have an answer of 20.20 20 grams of Li2O. So that pretty much is exactly what I expected. I expected a number smaller than 29. All right, what you're going to do now is you are going to take a look at this slide and you are going to stop your video and give this one a try. So take a look, is this the answer that you got? This wraps up our lesson on how to convert moles into grams and grams into moles. The key idea is to always find the molar mass and from the molar mass create conversion factors. When you found your conversion factor, make certain that you choose the conversion factor where the denominator has the same unit as the question quantity that's given 